All right, this should be the right one. <laughs> cool, let's make sure everything's functioning and then I'll get started. All right, cool. The live stream has started and I think audio is good to go. All right, this should be the right one. <laughs> cool. All right, audio is good to go. I'll grab this link and post it a few places. try this one more time <laughs> I've been having a little bit of trouble streaming um, trying to get figure this out with um, my thumbnail stuff so but I think I got it I think I'm good to go so I'm gonna post this on a few other places do do started art streams all right cool few of the streaming things on discord and we'll get going so i think that should be enough i believe tv showcase there we go sweet that's good so yeah I'm gonna be making a um, an attack this time so this is a little bit different than typical where I will be showing how to basically make a um, the Malfoy attack the slam down effect so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm going for and we'll get started so it's gonna be the R attack the slam down Ba -ba 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 Bam! All right. So basically, the longer Malfoy holds its attack, the the more it does. Um, so that being said, I need to figure out the scale of this attack, and then also, just in general, um, like, well, I only need to make one, luckily. So basically, on its like consecutive versions of that four hit attack thing or four burst attack coming from the ground will be stone pillars. And I only need to make one pillar, and we'll basically have a rotated um, version on each of them. So this shouldn't be difficult to pull off. Basically, just making one stone pillar, 
and we'll basically put it in engine and make sure it's the right scale and all that stuff so let's get started all right so first off i'm going to go ahead and make just a very very simple um cylinder model here let's get just get something in engine as quick as possible and make sure that we're getting our scale proper all right i want kind of a taller let's go ahead and make this spiky a little bit that's what I'm kind of wanting to see. All right, and then I know this is going to be very small relative to uh, engine, and so one way you can actually figure out how to do scale um, is if you go into create and then measure tools and then your distance tool. Now, um, I think yeah, it, it's it's like centimeters basically for Maya. Maya is like a, a standard centimeters, and so basically if you think about centimeters to feet. Um, it's kind of a good way to to manage this kind of thing on um, on proper scale. So let's say a human, um, a typical human male is about 100. I think it was 187 centimeters tall. Um, so let's go ahead and see. And we want that taller because we want this going to be it's going to be an attack. It's going to be a big like uh, cylindrical thing. So let's go ahead and see measuring tool, distance tool, and you'll click on the beginning and then drag. So see, even though this looks like it's big, it's really not that big. <clears throat> it's, um, so I'm gonna just start dragging this up and this is not even a human size here. And this is gonna be an attack. This is gonna be a pillar attack. So um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. So this is your typical, so let's, go, say, let's say this is about six feet. This is around six feet tall. Um, so I need this, uh, this to be much bigger, but um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring everything up and then I'm going to go ahead and drag this CD okay it's good it's already, it's already in the bottom so this is about six feet roughly there we go and I'm just gonna keep this around for for later just as, as a reference and then you should be able to see it at the zero axis see here kind of hung out with us so that's good all right so i'm gonna go ahead and export this and bring it into game engine as fast as possible to kind of get something super rough um super rough to primitive uh, i have this right rock pillar already ready to go in my vfx folder for maliboy and i'm actually going to call this um sm for static mesh underscore maliboy rock pillar because it's a static mesh first off and that belongs to maliboy second and then it is a rock pillar that is third so that is kind of the the naming convention thing that right there so i'm actually going to make a new one let's go ahead and call this let's call this vfx um sometimes people will put this in the animations and stuff like that but i'm going to put i'm going to have its own thing for just vfx so it's going to be an asset for vfx yo what up david what up Thanks for joining the stream. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do, 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 do. I need to find that again. So it's on D drive. I have so many folders. All right, so it's going to be on game IPs, chaos cart, characters, and Malaboy. Let's go into the do, 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 VFX folder I have for them. I really gotta clean some stuff up. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bring this over here. And import. Cool. I don't really care about the material at all right now. I'm just trying to figure this out. And so I spawn. I spawn over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag over here. Um, and I don't want to just like drive every single time. I want to test this uh, scale. Right. I'm just trying to make make this pillar and go. So this looks pretty small. But let's go ahead and test it. It's pretty close to my spawn area. Um, all right, let's see. R, boom, boom, boom. All right, yeah, that's way too small. Um, let's see what does not look small. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale it in scene. Whoop, I'm scaling the wrong thing. F for frame. So scale it up. Let's see what looks good. So that's looking a little bit more like what I'm thinking about for this attack, or maybe a little bit too tall. 
but then again it's coming from the ground right so it's, it looks going to be a bit different than what it looks like here um and boom 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 that's actually pretty dang close to what i'm looking for so let's say this is going to be like right there's gonna i'm gonna have four of these that are basically launch from the ground um i'm gonna bring this down just a just a hair the touch maybe maybe there Looks like that still looks intimidating so looks pretty good um and i think a good way to, to test this as well is we can go ahead and just bring um let's go ahead and bring him in a scene right this is Malaboy himself in the flesh um and this is basically this would cover his entire cart right so if you you can, you can clip through this completely this is pretty much uh body size so i'll go ahead and get rid of that um that's good to it's actually i'm going to keep it here as a reference um just to just to see so now if i play all right so i'm gonna go ahead and test again all right yeah that's feeling that's feeling pretty good to me i think i'm, I'm gonna keep that so that being said how much the larger is this cone and that's what's going to decide my scale and maya right so i'm gonna go ahead and do that now so i'm gonna go to vfx and then i'm gonna go here um actually I'm gonna, so on here if you go into the details rather than well saying you go to details and you see that this is scaled up 3.5 exactly times what it was from maya so that being said doing a little bit of math which i hate so i'm not going to do it very much um this is do 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 um, so this is around six feet, right? So we established. So we're looking for something that's 3.5 times that um, in, un in Unreal, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna freeze transforms from right here. So if I go over to my custom Danny or Danny custom uh, folder and press FT, if you do not have a custom folder with um, freeze transforms, get one. And if you don't know where it is, then go to modify and then freeze transforms right up here. All right, cool. So that being said, uh, from Unreal, I'm gonna go ahead and shift click all these. I don't know if that's gonna work, it didn't work. So I'm gonna do 3.5, oh, it did work, sweet. Uh, it didn't look like it was working. So this is way bigger than it was initially, but because we saw that in Unreal, that it was 3.5 times the size of um, what it was prior, this should be effective. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and free transforms again. Dupe, all right, cool, and then, just to see how large this is in comparison. So this is right around 700. And if I go in old Google, the uh, good old Google, I'm gonna go CM to feet, right? And then let's go ahead and do 702. So this is approximately 23 feet, <laughs> 23 feet tall and who knows the diameter, but it's fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide my widget here and let's go ahead and export this out and get into game engine asap all right sm malaboy underscore sm underscore malaboy underscore something else all right cool um i'm gonna go ahead and re-import so do, -do, -do re-import cool now it's large um the reason why it became extra large i believe was because it assumed that it um was pulling from the, the last version as the one. So it's, it's what, it, what it is, it's still at this current uh, scale factor at 3.5 in engine, but I, I scaled it in Maya, so it's like extra large. What up, Patrick? What up? What up? All right, cool. So all I gotta do is scale this down and then it'll fix that problem. I'm just doing some game dev, sir. Monsieur Patrick, all right. Cool. So yeah, now that it's one one one, or if I just pulled out a fresh one, basically, then it would it would be what I was thinking about. So this is essentially what I'm doing here, is that when you, you attack with this, it's going to bring out the four pillars in a row at the full maximum value of it, this attack. Um, it'll do 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 do, right? And um, so this is the effect of this ability, right? That's what I'm getting at. If I turn on some snapping, then this would. 50 snapping it doesn't really matter honestly okay so okay so I'm gonna have I'm gonna go ahead and delete these let's bring this guy over here and test 
boom 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 all right so this looking a little bit small however um the one thing to consider is vfx the effects have their own place and they need to show that this is the area of effect right and so if i made the actual mesh the size of the entire explosion which right now is a little bit smaller than or skinnier than see right i'll just show you again boom, boom, boom. so yeah it's see the air effect of this explosion is probably about this and this is much skinnier so i want to have some splash some splash effect right i want to splash around the edges of this uh, so maybe like fire or something coming out that just shows a little more intensity, a little bit, and maybe some like crumbling rocks as like it's going, it's, it's basically coming from the ground. I think it makes sense to have some crumble rock effect particles going on. So I'm not too worried about the actual mesh being the same exact width. Um, all right, now we know what we are going for. So, and we have this mesh. So I'm actually going to start going in the ZBrush. My favorite software. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and import this. So let's go into D drive. Uh, let's see, it doesn't have it yet. Some oh, characters, here we go. Let's look at it a little closer. Characters, Malfoy, doodle doodle doo, VFX, SKM. Cool, and I don't need to import any of these things, so I'm gonna keep those unchecked. And let's go ahead and pull it out. T for edit, and let's, go and build a stone um, but before I do that um, do not do anything without references what are you doing you need to have references you gotta you gotta do you gotta have the references so what's gonna do a stylize rock pillar cool let's look let's look that up stylized rock pillar goodness gracious what are you doing without references all right I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my handy dandy pure ref for to slap all these references on. And it's fantastic because I can just pull and, and then put it on there. So I like this one. This one's it's kind of what I'm going for. And maybe um, maybe not as, as crunchy, right? And not as Dark Souls and a little bit more um, a little bit more stylized than that, a little more like a league or something like that. Let's go ahead and hold C and drag and then bam, get rid of, oh, should have done it. C, yeah, crop, cool. Go ahead and crop that uh, for people that have pure ref, that's just hold C and drag. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, this is kind of, this is an easy uh, little stylized kind of rock thing. It's kind of what I'm going for, but maybe in a little bit more of a pillar form similar to this in a way um here's a here's another good reference so yeah these are good to have if you do not have reference you're doing it wrong for sure so another good one so this is going to show me kind of what cuts i need to make and what uh how to, how to sculpt something right so let me go ahead and see doop all right cool um doo -doo -doo -doo. any more things that i might want to grab this one I already chose. I like the texture work of, I believe it was, where was it? I think I missed it. Ah, this one. Yeah, I really like the texture work of this one. This was from the 3DX. I followed a lot of his tutorials in the past. Um, they're pretty solid. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that and you can kind of see how things were textured, right? You have some edge wear, you've got some, some flat zones. He probably just compressed a bunch of these into it themselves to make this happen. So that's great. That's what you want to see. That's awesome stuff. Let's go ahead and do, do, do. And I'm going to control P pack. Oh, I don't like that. So I'm going to actually undo that or not do that or redistribute it myself. I think that's enough things. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll add this one more for funsies. Why not? This is more of a fire rock. Maybe I should have a stylized lava rock. Let's see, lava rock. Mm, lava rock pillar, give me something. Here we go, that's looking more like what I was looking for. Let's get some Mountain Doom shiz up in here. So, I like that one too, that's a cool one. Yeah, it has some good, good flavors, good colors here. Let's go ahead and do that, control P. Okay, I like that one much better than the last control P. Um, what was it? Control Alt Up? No. Control Up? No. Control Alt Up? Yeah. And then Control and then yeah. That's a, okay. So for people that have Pure Ref, this is a great one to do. 
all I got to do is control alt and then up and all if you do that all at once then basically it makes them all around the same size or same scale and then you do uh, control P and that'll pack them all and then we're good to go all right I'm done with that get rid get rid of that Google Chrome monopoly and let's get started on the sculpt all right first off get rid of this ugly ugly map cap and go to something a little more white or green or anything else other than that map cap crap looking color and uh, let's move on so first off what do we do in ZBrush um, I, I dragged this in ZBrush from Maya and I'm basically going to make a stone but how do you do that all right so make sure you press T if you don't press T you won't be able to edit and you're just gonna draw and not know what's going on so this is what happens when you don't press T switch oh no I'm what am I doing ZBrush sucks I hate this. this is the worst software ever says everyone when they first start ZBrush right so don't do that drag it out one time shift to snap and then press T to edit it's great all right so now I can move around vertices all right can move around freely with my mouse uh, don't worry about all this stuff down here if you don't have these down here then watch my other video on how to make the uh, quick tabs right if you don't have it press B B is for brush um, E is uh, for English and so B for brush cool um, S is for like smooth or whatever yeah hold oh, sorry shift my bad shift is for smooth um, if you can't if I don't say something on here, check out the right up, right below my face, right, right here, right below my face. I have this handy dandy, handy dandy clicker clicker thing, and you can kind of see all the all the things I'm doing um, at all times when I'm doing it. Other than the rest of my the right half of my keyboard, you can't see what I'm doing over there. So, you know that's pretty sus. But um, all right, let's avoid that and let's go and make some stuff. All right, so if I want to see my topology, press poly F. Right, if, if you're if you're a ZBrush noob or you just love seeing topology, Poly F's your friend, right? If you're like, I don't like colors, Daniel, how do I get rid of colors? Then turn off, oh, it's the fill, right? So like, oh man, colors bother me. Yeah, fill, fill, fill is where it's at. Right, not dodge fill, but fill on here. Uh, lines here, but why would you press Poly F if you're not gonna use lines, honestly? It's uh, a waste of my time to talk about. So, um, Let's go ahead and press Control D. What does Control D do, Daniel? All right, Daniel says Control D basically is a subdivide. Um, subdivide for ZBrush noobs is basically making your current topology double, right? It kind of does a little like natural smooth, unless of course you go over here and turn off SMT with smooth, and then if you subdivide, it will not do that. See so like that. See, so, you know, it's nice and clean. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's go ahead and start making a thing. So um, I think the closest thing to what I'm wanting to do is probably this thing, but with this texture. So how does this, uh, how's this made maybe? All right, so um, I'm gonna actually keep my topology for simple. So I'm gonna keep it on this, this first subdivision. I don't know what happened here. That's goofy goofy. There we go, fixed it. Must have just unpacked itself. There we go. Okay, that, that's fixed. All right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start making some shape stuff. So I'm just gonna be moving around. I'm in the snake hook tool. So remember, press B. And if you're if your pure is in the way, then just you know right click, drag it out of the way, and then press P again. And then it is S for snake. And then click on the snake hook tool, which is right here. Bam, bam. It's my favorite one. I like it over the move, the move tool any day. So, and I don't have, I turn symmetry off, no need for symmetry when you're making rocks. Um, so first off, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the basic shape of this rock, right? I'm gonna keep that sharp thing. I like the sharp thing. Um, really feels like you're getting, you get smacked if you, uh, if you are in the way of this ability, right? This is gonna be a, a crazy ability. Um, so the, the, one of the goals is to keep it lower resolution. If you don't keep it lower resolution, it's gonna be a pain in the butt later down the road um, that being said I could still dynamesh something like this and um, just have a little bit more a uh, little bit more res um, I'm gonna have it not that much though so let's go ahead and bring it down some and then if I control drag then it makes it a little bit less 
So now I can actually shape it better. I'm gonna turn off poly F just so I can kind of see my, my clay a bit more. All right. All right, let's go ahead and make those cool shapes. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit lower res. And the way I'm gonna do that actually this time is I'm gonna go into my geometry and do Z remesher and let's go with half. All right, and then there's my uh, topology, so you can kind of see what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and half, half, and then 1,000 is pretty solid. I'm gonna do it one more time, uh, just for, for funsies, and I'm gonna start pulling. All right. Let me make this rock. It doesn't have to be very fancy. I'm just trying to make a a rock. I actually want to keep the bottom relatively, um, not symmetrical necessarily, but uh, roundish, right? I don't want to keep it roundish. All right. And so now I have a basic shape of this rock thing. Um, I, it, I can't really go much further than this unless I'm going to refine some details. So let's go ahead and control D. Um, and control D, uh, oh, it didn't do much because I didn't, I, I had smooth off. So I pressed the SMT again and let's do control D again. Uh, and um, I'm gonna start doing some more stuffs. So all I'm doing is move around some vertices here. Um, can make a little bit of a, cave here. I have this, this cloth tool, or what I can do is the uh, the detail brush, or maybe even a damn standard uh, tool, and I'm just going to make this kind of side stone thing. I'm just going to block this stuff out, right? Very similar to what, what they have here. dope I think that is looking pretty solid so um, yeah all I can do is uh, go from here so control D again to make it even more refined I'm gonna go ahead and press B and then press D and then go to damn standard and um, again for the ZBrush noobs I can cut in or if I hold alt I can pull out it's kind of like a reverse version of what you're doing with that brush so it's kind of like a pinch a pinch drag brush kind of deal so I'm gonna go ahead and, and push in and then do the opposite on the edge oh, next to it or adjacent to it, right? So here and here, so it kind of feels a little more harsh, just a little more like a, it's coming out like, it's not like a balloon, it's a rock, right? So that's, that's kind of what we're going for. Let's make it anti-balloon rock. I imagine that balloons don't like rocks that much. <clears throat> All right, so just making some easy chops. Let's go ahead and carve into here. Carve, carve, carve. Just making some preliminary shapes going. And um, yeah, I think I might want it a little bit wider and squatter than this, right? So easy way to do that is, there's two ways to do that. There's either I just squash everything together, or if I say if I want to keep this base more, then I do is actually control. And if I say if I pull this down, it's gonna just chop really stupid, right? And so what I do is actually while I have this widget out, so that's my W, right? I just held W, so hold W, hold or sorry, control. I'm sorry, press W for the widget, hold control, drag to bring out your kind of like shadow manipulator, right? Um, mask, and then control, click, 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 click. Look how faded that is. Now it's gonna be way, way smoother. Cool. So now I can drag it down, and it'll kind of squash. A lot more gently, I guess, is the, is the right the right word for that. Cool. And then, uh, not, if I also could just do it this way, if if um, if it doesn't matter. So, um, sweet. All right. So I want the stone just to be a little bit more random. I don't want this to be like a actual pillar. Um, yeah, that darn standard. I know. <laughs> What's up, 3D mentor? Glad to have you. Um, I'm just making some stones uh, for the Malaboy ability. I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick, just in case you are not aware of this one ability. It is to do play. All right, cool. So if I press F11 and it is the R ability, this is what I'm working on right now. 
it's the uh right now it's kind of like a fire explosion deal and i wanted to actually be uh his smackdown to be a lot more like whack-a-mole and um and have a pillar shoot up um kind of like a i don't know a ground smack attack thing um and oh uh, wrong one r yeah yeah so and this can be up to one to four of these pillars so uh yeah anyway that's what i'm going for at the moment showing the whole little pipeline as much as i can in the stream so i'm trying to make work pretty quickly pretty quickly um so yeah just trying to make in some some basic shapes this is again going to be very random uh what i'm doing here can i keep it very organic right And then if I want to make some flat surfaces that look a little more like like this, where it's a it's very planar feel, then I'm going to go for this trim dynamic. And again, that's B for ZBrush noobs. we got some B and then T and then trim dynamics right over here. Got to cater to my new artists out here. Not everyone's been doing this for years and appreciate the hustle. So respect for any artist who's making art. All right, cool. So yeah, you can kind of see already how I'm really getting into this, um, this very like rock-like feel, right? And it's, it doesn't take very long. Just making it very easy, very simple. And I'm purposefully not like rounding it, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to smooth it like this. I'm purposely trying to just divvy it. It's almost like a uh, uh, hammer and anvil, right? You're you're not you're not trying to make it smooth on on this. It's just, it's very much rough on purpose. Now I'm still keeping this pretty low res. All right, this is, this is pretty, well, I guess, medium res kind of feel. It's uh, 40, 40,000, and I can always lower it. Oop, I didn't mean to press that. Three, like that, and then I can just kind of chop into it more. Um, the lower res, the, the cleaner it'll be. But see, if I'm here, it's, it's impossible to make any details. So I need to kind of be a little bit higher to kind of um, create more of what I'm trying to do, right? So, but I think four is a pretty good spot where I'm at. So I'm just going to keep on doing this. And actually, I have a good idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up uh, Malphite from League of Legends. Malphite. Right, I think Malphite's, yeah, Malphite's the stone character, right, in League of Legends. And he has this kind of like, this cool little stone and, and cracks and everything. This is, a, this is a good reference. Maybe, is there like a Lava Malphite skin? There, kit, there is. Okay, so that's that's pretty dope. Um, let's see. Can I get a good resolution one, please? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into my pure ref, uh, which we're okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my pure ref and all right, and then I'm gonna go to the normal Malphite skin, and this is very much the style that I'm going for. So I'm I think this is a good way to get some references for this style matching right so cool all right let's go ahead and exit out of that and keep moving all right so the way they do this lava rock is actually pretty cool where it's it's like it has like this like middle zone and this doesn't necessarily have to be lava rock but um i, I do like this kind of like emissive crack thing that's like it kind of pops up and it's, it's a little bit more hot like that um but it also could be a very VFX thing. So this could be just a stone that like this, that just has a VFX that kind of burst around it. So um, either way is fine. His current attacks do have a little bit of fire to them. And so that's what I was kind of thinking about having some lava-ish rocks, but that also is, that's just all, doesn't really matter too much. Um, I have this design document that that shows what I'm kind of going with with here, um, and I'll go ahead and show that now. Do do drive, 
Let's go to our Mount Boy Design document. All right, so in my design document, I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller actually, so we can maybe fill up the whole space. Um, Mount Boy Design document, let's go ahead and go to the, go back control, right? So he's gonna be basically slamming down and it's going to get longer as he holds the button. And like uh, the trundle here, this is a good example, is this stone right here. So actually, I think the trundle pillars is actually one of the best ways to do this. I'm actually gonna, <laughs> I don't know why to think about that. Um, trundle pillar. Yeah, cool. Maybe it'll show. Do, 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 do. Ice pillar. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that on here. And <clears throat> yeah, ice pillar model. I think this is also a good example. Cool. So I'm just gonna drag these from uh, the Google again and do gray Google. And basically, yeah, so what I'm going for is like is like a bunch of pillars, but then in a line somewhere to the Nautilus thing. So that's the design document. All right. We'll go ahead and pack this again so that would be remember the control alt up to match and then contr uh, control p to pack i'm actually going to bring this this guy over here cool all right so i like how it kind of sprouts out like this this is kind of cool um i think this is a good example of what i'm going to go for is like this it's actually a few supporting rocks on here too so maybe i can create like one or two supporting rocks to fulfill this um this effect as well so i think this is a really cool way to see to see it um all right so i have my main stone here which i like how this is kind of uh it kind of pulls out like that so i'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger So this means I'll probably have to rescale it because I'm, I am making it larger. All right, cool. And so I really like how sharp these rocks are. It's really fun. These are our kind of like ice pillars and everything. So I guess there's a little bit difference uh, here, but um, but it's still really cool. So I'm gonna kind of uh, pull from a couple different references, but I, I really like the way this, this goes. So <clears throat> what I can do with this, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate. So I'm making, I'm basically duplicating it and making the smaller ones around it. I really like the way this goes. So I'm gonna try to replicate this a bit. So, um, and so they're not the same. I'm actually going to delete and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and Dynamesh this secondary one, right? And then I'm just gonna shape it how I want to. Let's go ahead and draw a snake hook. And so in the scheme of things, this is not all one VFX. So this main bit might be, but these side ones would not. Um, they would actually be their own unique uh, VFX that you actually wanna have spawn around this rock, right? And so uh, you actually don't wanna have them as the same asset. You wanna have them uh, zeroed out at their own um, at their own rate, or, or you wanna, oh, not re-zeroed out at their own rate. You wanna have them zeroed out and then export it separately so they can spawn at their own rate. Yeah, 
and this one I'm literally just gonna make two. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. Basically, a small one and a large one. Kind of like what this is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete lower. Just so I can duplicate this easy, and then I'm gonna have my my small one over here, just for just to show at the moment. <clears throat> Make this kind of squatter and shorter. Welcome to the stream, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Just making some rocks at the moment, making some cool VFX stuff. Feel free to join the Discord channel. It's in the link below if you want to hang out and see when we're making videos and see our development stuff. <laughs> In the meantime, feel free to just hang out and lurk. Appreciate your company. Alright, so we're getting close to finishing the sculpt here. I'm not going to really do a whole lot more with this. Um, I, yeah, this is this is somewhat placeholder at the moment, and we'll probably figure out what we want to do more once it's in game and we can test it a bit. So I am really just trying to get something that looks cool and it is workable or usable for my engineer. Um, Alright, so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and do a mask lasso bit, and then I'm going to chop this in here. I don't like how it got that that side right here. I'm gonna go ahead and chop into this edge. It's looking a little bit too 90. Right, a lot of stylized stuff does not have 90s. It's very much a 45 degree. Um, you want things to kind of show out a little better. There we go. I'm really digging this music. Let me know if y'all want me to turn up the music or turn it down. I don't know how it is on your end, but it sounds grooving on my end. Love me some lo-fis, work easy on it. Starting to make some nice splits right here. There's a lot more like stony, right? Like a lot more, at least like planar, stylized stony. That's kind of what I'm going for, right? So. I'm not really an environment artist, but I, I do know some of some things about environments and about stylization. All right, cool. And a, a cool, easy way to kind of cheat this effect as well. Like once you have some of it going, is um, the clay polish, I noticed. The clay polish does some, does some work. See, it, it it's tightens up these edges quite a bit. And um, there's like one other one I, I know. Let's see, what was the other one? So I'm gonna undo that real quick. And then I feel like it creases it too sharply. I'm not sure about that one. So if I go to uh, Dynamesh and Polish right here, um, yeah, probably I need to have about a higher resolution. This probably would be so. This is at about six half, half a million right now. If I do this, yes, always. Okay, I did not like that. Right, that's way too low. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna higher high resolution this. All right, for some reason, oh, it's because I have uh, subdivisions. 
So if I, I feel like I'm pretty solid at this point now. Um, I'm actually gonna just duplicate this just in case I wanna change my, I change my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, go back to this, or this is my duplication. I'm gonna hide this one and then go to my duplication because it doesn't have history. All right, so now the duplication, I'm gonna go ahead and delete lower. And so now I can Dynamesh freely and see the polish really kind of like makes it look it's a little bit smoother, right? So I'm gonna go a little higher than I wanted to go. So maybe like right here. Cool. Yeah, so it basically just tightens up. See that see those hard edges right there? It kind of just tightened up a little bit more on these areas. Um, so that's cool. I'm gonna to put a little bit work into this just to make it a little bit more planar on these edges that are too soft. And then I'll move on to uh, to Maya. Let's go ahead and solo this. Probably won't even see a lot of these areas, right? Because they'll probably be tucked away in, in the ground a little bit. Get my damn standard again to make some some creases. getting close I'm trying to redefine that there's some separation in these stones right so like kind of like where you have these bits right so make sure that there is some separation feel okay feels Feels pretty good. Just add a little bit more here. More organic kind of vibe. Giving it some sharp edges here, here and there. squelch this, this edge looking too structured too purposeful just doing some small pull outs on these edges like this these as I please with my move tool feels pretty good I think thanks for the love y'all thanks for hanging out
you know what? I think I forgot to. I did. I need to post this on LinkedIn. In case any people wanna wanna hang out on from LinkedIn. I didn't mean to at streaming, I meant to hashtag streaming. There we go. Cool, that should be enough. All right, back to it. So go back to going back to geometry, and I'm going to do one more polish. Um, oh, yeah, again with this. I think I need to have this at a higher resolution for sure. There we go. Kind of tighten it up a little bit. We'll do it one more time. It's starting to look pretty good. All right, so I have my three variations of stone here of rock. Now. Um, there is, there's a few more things that we can do here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the main one first. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the other one and just see what I have here. So, um, I have this, I have the stone, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it before I do anything. I'm gonna duplicate the other ones as well. All right, the second one, I'm going to basically, oh, I'm gonna hide that as well. There we go, okay. So I need to make it a lot more friendly for Maya. Also, there's ways that I can, in ZBrush, make my low poly mesh without having to do any retopology in Maya, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do, 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 do. Well, first off, I'm gonna check this one more time before anything else. Make sure that I like it. Yeah, I think it's fine. So, yep, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one more time because I changed one or two things, delete that last one. That's fine, that's the one with history. All right, cool. So this is going to be decimated. And so basically, if you don't know what decimation is, um, it's basically a way to bring it into Maya and not be so heavy. Right now it's half a million polygons. And I don't want to lose any of this detail, right? This is, this is one of the biggest important things about this is I don't want to lose this detail. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of write it one more time because it's looking a little bit, a little bit rough. So I don't want to lose this detail. So what do I do to not lose this detail, but still have it nice and, and easier for Maya, right? So I go into my Z plugin, go to my decimation master and pre-process current. All right, so now I'm gonna wait a second while this is pre-processing. And basically it is understanding the mesh to be able to make it lower resolution um, basically automatically, which is fantastic. Um, and after I pre-process this, I'll show you the how dense this mesh is. All right, writing to disk. All right, so that was about 20 second process, not too bad. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and press poly F and you can see how dense this mesh is. It's pretty dense, right? But this is this is not really that, that Maya friendly. Um, Maya can handle probably about 3 million without being too sluggy, but um, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to maybe say 10% right now. And I'll just make current. All right, so let's make sure that none of my details have been altered or muddied. So, so far, so good. There's a little bit of there's a little bit of like softness right here, which I'm not too fond of. Um, right, and if I if I sculpt on this, decimated is meshes are just not sculptable. So that's one thing to think about. You need to be at your finished state before you decimate because it's going to just be bad. Um, so I think overall it's pretty solid. It's keeping my shape for the most part. Um, right, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
estimate again at a lower value, let's say 5%, right? And it's 5% of the original value. So but not 5% of this current value. So I'm gonna go and do it again. Estimate current. Again, I don't see any major difference with this. And see how it's really just, it's tightening those edges and it's really keeping those edges strong while uh, being really loose in the middles. That's, that's what I'm looking for. All right, I think this is uh, this is where I'm at. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and export this as my high poly. Um, but first, I'm gonna wanna finish the other ones real quick. Or actually, I'm gonna duplicate this. So I may not have to. Um, right. So I'm gonna go and duplicate this real quick. And I'm going to do it at a very very low ratio and see how low I can make it. Uh, well, while it still keeps its uh, its general shape. All right. So let's try to go for. Let's go for 1%. Oops. Okay, so this is estimated. I'm going to, yeah, let's go for 1% of this. Make sure it kept its original value or original stuff. Pretty good. So I'm not looking for this to keep its its detail anymore, right? This is the low resolution. This is the game model, right? I don't I don't want I don't care about all this detail anymore. So I'm gonna try my best to um, get it low, and so let's say point point five. Starting to see some crackling effects now. That's kind of what we're going for. Let's go lower. Let's go 0.1. Much better. I think we can do slightly better. Let's let's make sure it didn't it didn't break up my rock too much. Yeah, see it's still keeping it's still keeping its shape very well. Right, it's not keeping the detail, but that's not the point. It's keeping its shape. And so that's that's at a little over two thousand, which is honestly pretty good. That's 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 actually pretty good for this. But I want to go a little bit lower and see if if we can. That's okay. So I'm gonna go point zero five and decimate again. All right. So nine hundred and twenty. That's even better. Let's go a little bit lower. <laughs> I know this is not the most fun content, but I this is uh, decimation is kind of boring, but it does save a lot of time having to not not having to uh, retopologize. Re so I'm trying to keep its shape the best as it can, which is super good, while well being a lower resolution model. All right, you know what? I think that's pretty solid. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. And uh, I might do some cleanup in, in, uh, in Maya, but I think this is pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this. And um, this will be my, you can do this as, rock one, I'll have this rock one and then low. Rock one low. I think there should be a way I can it, I think it's solid. I think it, I think it did pretty pretty solid um, with that. So, uh, rock one low, and then I'm gonna export this as. Oh, and I want to do it as FBXs. So one more time, I'm gonna export this and then go to FBX exporter. I like XB, FBXs way more. Yeah, rock one low, and then I'm gonna do selected, not visible. Um, so selected. Cool. And I'm gonna call this one rock one high. This is the decimated one. VFX, rock one, high. Cool, okay. All right, let's bring this into Maya. Just to make sure that it's looking, looking where I want it to be. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this right now. And go ahead and pull these two in. All 
all right so this is my, remember this is my original uh shape so i'm actually going to try to match that a little bit so d d all right cool so all i got to do is double select these and shrink it down a bit like that there we go all right cool yep that's where I want it to be so that's looking looking solid rock one hi awesome So I'm going to go back into my Z brush, my Z brush, and if you're English, that's that Z brush, I think it was. Um, okay. So yeah, now I'm going to, uh, basically I have these two left and I want to do the same thing with these. So I'm going to I want to center pivot this and turn it just right now at least turn it let's make it a little more straight right um sweet what's up kevin welcome thanks for chilling uh all right so these are my my two side rocks right my two little uh vfx rocks that are basically going to be uh, these side, these side pieces, right? And so, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this now and go ahead and delete this one. And I actually probably should separate these, uh, now. Let me make sure it doesn't have, okay, it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and split unmasked so that these are individual. Now this geometry and position and I can zero this out zero 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 and so now that's that's a true zero. Oh, that's minus zero I don't want that <laughs> all right cool so that one's zeroed out now and then um, I can turn this one on and do the same with this one this is position right so this is just going into geometry tab position and zero I need to accept it. Zero, zero. This isn't truly necessary, but I just, just want to do it because these are just little side pieces, but they will spawn differently, right? Um, so, cool. I'm going to go ahead and I don't think this one is meant for anything. This was just my duplicate. Um, is it, once it has, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this one. So this is my high, this is my low, and this is my one with subdivision. So I want to keep all this stuff. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Pre-process current. It should be really fast because it's small. Yeah, it already finished. Cool. I'm going to do pre-process current on this one too. Should be really fast. Cool. Good to go on that. All right, cool. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and... That's me at 10% again. I'll try to keep this high up a little bit more. So, let's make current. These really aren't too bad of resolution. So, I'm going to do 30% of these because they're, they're already really low resolution. So, let's make current. This one, same thing, 30%, decimate current. Cool. Yep, that feels good. So I'm gonna have these as my high, so rename. I'll call this rock three. Rock three high. 
rename rock two rock too high. Go ahead and do that accordingly. Rock one high. Okay, cool. So yeah, rock too high. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one. The rock too high to have the rock one, rock two low. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this automatically with the decimation again. Let's see, I think I have to preprocess this current again because it's, I duplicated it and I don't think duplications keep their, uh, their decimation process. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this one similar to the last one at around like, let's say 1%. All right, make sure it doesn't break the silhouette. Let me see that without. That's pretty dang close. Cool. Uh, let's do a little bit less. Let's do, honestly, that's that's honestly pretty good. So I'm gonna do point, point zero, let's see this point zero eight. Nope. All right, let's keep it here. <laughs> I completely broke it. So yeah, rock two low, rock two high are done. So rock two, rock three high is done. And I need to make the rock three low now. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate. Rename. Rock three low. All right, almost done with this y'all. Then we can move on to the fun stuff. The real fun stuff cool um, yeah so that's my low so I'm gonna go ahead and preprocess again okay it's done nice and quick and then let's see decimate nope that's too low that's how you can tell it's low is it kind of just breaks itself so let's go ahead and do two percent and see how it does so make current pretty good I'm gonna keep that so let's uh, make it unshaded so I can see a little bit better Cool. Yep, I'm gonna keep that. So let's go ahead and export all these. So what I'm, what I'm actually gonna do here um, is what I can do is export all these at once and do um, export visible right now. This is gonna be just my rocks. Rocks FBX, right? So you see my all my rocks. This will, this will be everything that I can see. Rock low, rock highs. So, so that's why I didn't, I didn't do this first one, but. All right, that was good, that was, that was fast. So I'm actually going to delete this for right now and bring in only just the rocks, right? This is all the stuff. Assuming it wants to work, let's see. Favorite mismatch. That's new. Okay, so all right, I'll just do it like I was doing it. Um, let's just go ahead and control Z. Okay, it doesn't want me to, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these back in. That's fine. So I'm gonna go back to my Z brush, and then I'm going to just do this one at a time, I guess. Then, so I'll go do my. Rock too high, export, rock too high. The name of is already in here because, uh, and this is only because, make sure you switch it back to select instead of visible, um, because I renamed it in ZBrush. So it's going to automatically export as that name. It's like in Maya. I just need to make sure it's there in the right area. So that's probably the, yeah, let me make sure that's happening. So yeah, VFX, and that has rock too high. I could, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. selected visible, not visible, but selected. Uh, rock three high export. Okay, it's in that. It's a good name convention. Export. And then export. All right. For some reason, the lows seem to be uh, wanted to be in a different boulder, and the highs are, are good in the VFX. I'm not sure what's happening there, but that's kind of silly. Um, all right. So obviously, I don't need this rocks anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Get out of the way. All right. Cool. All right, so first off, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, and I'm just gonna bring all my lows out real quick. Oops. 
I'm gonna have everything in, in here, but I wanna just, just have my lows for a second. Okay, if I change the proportion, then it will mess it up from the high. So I wanna make sure that I don't do that. Let's see, rock, high, rock one high. Rock one high. All right, cool. So now my high is not matching. So now I can play with these. And then where is my... All right, so one thing that I'll have to do is I'm gonna have to UV these, right? So basically, I go into my UV editor. That is huge for some reason. Let's go and bring this lower. All right, so here's my UV editor and I'm just going to make these rocks all fit in one, one sheet, right? This is all gonna be the same kind of deal and the same shader, same texture, all that stuff, right? So go ahead and hide this real quick and I'm gonna bring these down. Oops, if I do that, then it will not be the same as the, the high. So I need to bring in these highs out and I'm gonna pull all this down. So these two, it's looking pretty good. And this one, center that a little bit better. Cool. All right, so now I'm gonna bring all these lows out and we'll just go ahead and UV these. So I'm gonna do the top one first, so the big one first. And UVing is really not that hard, I promise you. Promise you, promise you. It is not that bad. Cool. H get rid of this high again and then all right so the way that i quickly uv something is like this right i'm going to go ahead and uv and then i'm going to do camera base and see camera base is fantastic because it is exactly what you're seeing right is i'm seeing this and so it it, it just gives me a flat projection of what i'm looking at if i just do camera base on the top i'm going to just do it again camera base now i'm getting a flat projection of the top it's it's really good right um, and really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to capture each individual object right now. So it doesn't really matter which angle I go from. I'm just going to have this. I'm going to go ahead and go to shell. So if I right click, hold, go to shell, click and drag it over here. Right. And then, so now I can go ahead and hide this for right now. Let's go ahead and UV let's do camera base. Right. So now this is, I'm going to go shell mode, click, and that's going to be my, my left zone. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. UV camera base. Cool. This is my last one. Go down here. All right. So now these things need to be chopped up and flattened so that they actually have proper UVs. So if I go to this um, this checker form, you see all this red and all this really crappy stretching. Well, we don't want that, right? So we want it. We want our assets to look really cool and make cool games. So we don't want stretching. We don't want we don't want back faces stuff like this. So a couple ways we can go about doing this. We can either go along an edge, as closest to a true edge as possible with our decimated uh, mesh here, or we can cap the bottom and uh, maybe like put one cut in or something like that. And so that there's a couple, yeah. Basically we wanna hide the seams as much as possible. That's where you really want to think about is just hiding seams. So. For this one, I have this nice big platform on the bottom. So I can, I can try to cut the bottom out. The problem is it's going to really flatten all this tall shape and it's going to have this like weird, like circular effect. So we actually need to have a chop up the top. That being said, 
we can actually cut inside the uh, the natural edges happening over here, right? There's we have some natural um, like edges here that that kind of separate these these uh, things and like like up this edge, like for instance. Um, and so we can we can kind of hide seams in these areas of less interest. Um, this is a natural seam area right here. So let's go ahead and do that now, right? Let's let's go ahead and bring this UV editor up again and chop this up a little bit. All right, so first off, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this bottom. So what I mean by that is kind of grabbing these, these true edges. I'm gonna keep the the bottom cap. I could actually delete this this bot these bottom faces, but I'm not too worried about that. Can you update Discord link? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Let me update this Discord link. That's true. I think it is uh, it is out of date at the moment. It's um, I was having some issues with that before, and I forgot to change it. Let me let me get you a new link real quick before I move on. Uh, Udemy. I have it on my Udemy stuff. I, I remember I updated it on my Udemy. Or actually, I updated it on my uh, recent videos, but not this stream. One second. And I will do that for you. Copy. Let's go ahead and edit. And this should work. Save. All right, yeah. Go ahead and um, go ahead and refresh this page and uh, and see if that if that works. Let me know if it works for you. Um, yeah, let me let me know if it works for you. I want to make sure people can hop on Discord and or the Discord channel and hang out, um, see what we're up to and stuff. So I appreciate your feedback on that. Thanks for letting me know. I I completely forgot that that was a broken link. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this this bottom off, and you'll see that now it's its own shell. All right, so it's red. What does red mean? Red means it's flipped. So what I'm gonna do is hold right click, or sorry, hold shift, hold right click, and I'm gonna unfold, unfold, and that flips it automatically, which is nice. So now I have some nice clean UVs in the bottom. But I don't need that much texture space. I'll show you that in a minute. So see, I can I can current I can basically unfold it here, but what it's going to do is distribute pretty weird. See, it's going to be nice and, and stretched out like that, and that's it's a little too uh, a little too dirty for my taste. I think generally for like a shoe, you can totally do it this way, but um, this is a little bit too stretched out. And it's gonna it's gonna look a little bit funny on uh, certain areas like this, right? We're just gonna have a nice long stretch bits. Um, so let's clean this up a little bit. So how do we do do that? Let's find the most natural edge, which I think is this right here. It goes pretty straight up, and cut it up as much as possible so we have nice clean UVs. Um, and let's see. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an edge mode. Yeah, again, please let me know if the um, if the Discord channel thing is not working still, and I'll I'll try to update it again if it's having some more issues. Sorry about that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, and we'll see what we get. So I'm kind of like cutting up at the pillar. And then I'll go ahead and unfold and unfold. All right, and we're kind of getting this nice, like, um, more flat looking thing going on. So let's see what it looks like here. Right, it's not perfect, but it's it's not nearly as a stretch as it was before, right? So um, that's that's really important is that it's, it's getting a lot more to a square feel. And even though there's a little bit pull in certain areas, that's, that's not really a big deal. Uh, so basically just made like one, one cut down the side. We capped the bottom, right? 
and then um, that's all we had to do here for UVs. Uh, right, so UVs are really not that big of a deal. Now let's go ahead and do the little small, the small rocks. Also, here is the Discord channel in case um, it, for some reason it was not, I'm gonna go ahead and post it in chat. Uh, you don't see it or it didn't refresh properly or something like that, so. Feel free to join the Discord channel if you'd like to. Happy to have you. All right, so let's go ahead and hide this and let's go to our Rock 2. And so Rock 2 is pretty easy as well. We could cap it, but I don't really feel like there's a need to cap it. Um, so let's go, what is the most natural, less seen side? And this is this is very standout-ish. It, it, it's concave or whatever, right? Um, because the convex and there's concave. So let's go ahead and go on the convex side for UVs, on this because it's gonna be it's gonna be less seen. So let's go. This is a, kind of a hard edge here. I'm gonna do something like this. go cool it's making a nice cut and because I didn't cap the bottom I'm just gonna cut through the bottom and everything like that so this is going to be where I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of keep the seam. And, and if I was doing retopology myself, it would be clean straight down. But I decimated this because it's a rock. It's not going to have any animations. Do not have this kind of topology for characters. Do not. This is only because it's not going to be animated, right? I don't need I don't need clean loops on something that won't be animated. It's literally just going to it's going to animate up, but it won't it won't flex or won't it won't do any of that stuff, right? It's going to sit at the super stone. So. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit higher up to this crux here um, because it's quite tight in this in this upper zone and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut and I'm gonna go ahead and, and shell so I clear on the shell oh first off right click hold UV shell then click and then right and then shift right click hold unfold unfold bam I right, let's check it out in the UVs look at how clean that is it's super clean super easy um yeah so there's a little bit of, of, of stretching a little bit but it's it's literally it's fine um yeah uvs are not not that hard so let's go ahead and tuck this off to the side all right we have one more to work with and then we're down to start baking so here this one's small enough where i probably could just cap the bottom and flatten it but it's still I don't know. I really don't like the idea of doing that because it is still tall. So I want to have a seam down the side again. And this seems like a true edge right here. You see this hard edge? So I'm going to go ahead and grab this hard edge. So it's either what's most tucked away or a nice hard edge that you wouldn't expect continuity on a hard edge much anyway. So a lot of times hard edges are a good place to go. If it's like a hand, for instance, you would want to do it in the middle of the finger spread. Um, Let's see here. So I'm gonna go here because it flows. It flows a little bit nicer. Let's see. And the bottom is the bottom is honestly not even a concern for me because you're not you're never gonna see this whole cap. I'm literally just having it in case there's any shader issues or shading issues. So if it comes up, I don't want to like look like crap for some reason or like maybe like the lighting will be hitting it weird so i'm the bottom not worried about the uvs though um but it'll still it'll still look fine all right i'm gonna cut uv shell go right click hold uv shell click shift right click hold unfold unfold super easy barely any convenience all right <laughs> if y'all seen that that series um cool all right so i'm gonna just unhide my all my lows and let's go ahead and make this into a uv thing right let's let's do this thing 
All right, so that's here. And let's go to my rock two, which is all here. And bring it up, bring it into this left corner and rock three. It's way too big for what it is. Let's go ahead and shrink that and bring it in this right corner, right? So now I have all three of these in place. This cap I don't really care about at all. It doesn't have to have any UV space at all. So go ahead and just tuck that away. All right, cool. And so, so one uh, one trick for this is actually um, making sure you have the same textile density. And this is something that um, you don't necessarily have to do. You can kind of just eyeball it. That like, oh yeah, hey, like these are a very similar um, like say like this one is very dang similar to this one. So if you have these both deselected, like the squares are, are somewhat close in size. This is this is way dip more dense. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go a shell and then like shrink it. You see now it's getting closer to that same density. So you can do that. Um, or you can basically do this automated way where I'm gonna go ahead and drag and grab all these. And let's see. It's been a second since I've done this because the characters I, I do it all by all by hand. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and then UV UV editor. Okay, yeah, it's in this UV toolkit. What I can do is I can go into UV mode, uh, UV editing, and it, or it has a toolkit tucked away in the side over here. It's fantastic, right? So, um, is the align and snap? I believe. Or no, arrange and layout. I want to say there we go uh the, you, have the, you have the distance and then okay i need to find it real quick because this is changed up a little bit i have i recently gotten the new version of maya and transform this sounds right yeah here we go all right so textual densities is right here so right now it understands this is a 2k map um that's great. So what can I do with it exactly? As you see right here, I have the uh, textile density at 12 right at the moment. So um, let's see how that looks. So it's blown out, right? It's, it's too big. So obviously 12 is not going to work. Um, so, okay, if I get this, let's see, if I set it at that, uh, it's just still too big. So I'm going to go maybe at a, at a solid 1.5 textile density and then set and then you see that all is going to fit um which is why i'm going to fit it so i'm going to make sure it's a little bit bigger i'm going to i want to give this main pillar a lot of texture space right so um see so yeah, that's going to be blown up um i to make sure that this is not being is not being touched up here All right, say if I want to give it some more UV space and I and, and um, I want to fill the space in some more, then I can do that. <clears throat> so what I can do if I want to is basically if I want to grab like a UV vertice, for instance, and I press B. B is for soft select. I can go ahead and pull this vert and tuck it up here. Now this will give me even more UV space. Now where is this? This is over here, right? So. Um, so see, I can I can just I did basically just giving this more UV space right here. See, I'm adding resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it, pull it. Just, I'm just giving it more resolution. zone and see like I mean even I may not even want to want to do this right because it's a it's a bit it's a bit too different like it's it's super high resolution here and so it, it almost like detracts from what I'm trying to do here and and it's if it's not done right it's gonna stretch so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in I'm gonna pull this in a bit 
and I think it's honestly it's fine I, I think that's um, if anything I want to add more resolution here where it's a bit stretchy so I'm gonna find out where that is so yeah it's right around this zone So what I can do is I can soft select this area and then I can pull pull it back down a little bit. Just kind of giving this more resolution right here where it's stretchy. Okay, cool. Like that. I'm just going to give this a little bit more The more I pull this away, the more I get more information here. So I'm going to pull this all a little bit up. So, but I'm tugging a lot of vertices here. See, I'm trying to really pull at it a lot. So now it's going to get a lot more resolution. Cool. So I like that. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit. And then um, what's this down here? So down here is this zone. If I pull it, I pull, pull all these down a lot more, it's going to give it, again, it's going to basically allow a lot more texture density or texture resolution out for the, right, this, this zone down here. And it, it, it grabs it and pulls it up, which allows for more, for more texture information, which is cool. This will make a lot more sense when I get into the texturing process in Substance Painter. I just, I'll be getting there in just a minute. So here... It's a little bit stretchy here. See, now I'm pulling this way is allowing more of that resolution over here. That's what I'm going for. I'm going to go ahead and reduce my soft select. Awesome. So, this is my cap. Turn off soft select. But soft select is B by the by chance. If you if you don't know, um, and see this is much different resolution. But again, you're never going to see this cap. So I could honestly just make it super tiny and put it in this corner, and literally nothing's going to be. It's not going to be a problem. I'm actually going to put it in this corner. I'm just going to just fill up this spot right over here. You're never going to see this spot, but it's it's I don't know. It's good to have. Um, I don't like having holes in my mesh, I guess. Even if you're not gonna see it, I don't like having too many holes because sometimes it, 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 the holes are shown and then that's kind of problematic and stuff, so. All right, so that's good to go. And because we did this texture density thing, we set them all at 1.5, we know that we're all they're all at similar resolutions. And I can prove that by pulling this to the side and then clicking on this and you can see that they're very dang close. And if they're not as close as they were before, it's because I added resolution. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I don't wanna hide this actually, cause so, go ahead and exit out of this. Before I do anything, I'm going to freeze my transforms so that it zeroes it out. So I wanna move this over here, but I wanna be able to zero it back and then it snaps properly. So I'm gonna move this real quick. I'm gonna freeze my transforms here as well. And then I'm gonna freeze my transforms on my small one. It's that all that does is zero this stuff out. So now I can, if I just press, if I just go on here and go zero on my transforms, it snaps back to where I want it to be. Um, so now I can, now I can hide it effectively and not worry about, well, not hide it. I want to move it effectively and then uh, be able to select, select both of them so that I can see on the UV uh, editing mode um, where everything is. So if I grab everything, then you can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this more resolution. And also go into UV mode and then do the give this more resolution as well. Kind of just giving everything as, as much resolution as I can manage, as I can muster here. Without it kind of messing up my, my stuff. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one and scale it up. It doesn't really matter. How, I guess, yeah. 
once I, once I grab position, it, it'll kind of know the gradient stuff. So yeah, there we go. It's all looking pretty good and pretty similar resolution. We got a little bit of stretchiness here, but it's honestly, it's it's manageable and it's fine. So, all right, this is a pretty solid UV space. Um, I don't want to add too much resolution just because I don't want it to be too high, too much higher than everything else. So that's the reason why I'm not just managing every single little little pixel, right? And also, if you de-res something, which I likely will do, then sometimes it can muddy up if they're too close to each other, right? So like, if I go to like say 512 by 512 eventually or whatever, then if they're too close to each other, it can it can kind of like kind of merge into each other. So that's not what I want to do. It can like blur pixels essentially. <clears throat> All right, so I think that's where I want to be for my UVs. Now let's uh, go ahead and start baking. So now I can go back into this, zero this out. If you join the Discord, welcome. All right, so I have my three and they're already named. How convenient. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these up here. So now I have my three highs and my three lows. I'm gonna go ahead and just organize them because I like being organized. Um, cool. And so, so now I can't see these other, right, these other ones. These other ones are like inside this big one. So what do I do about that? Well, I can explode them. And normally I don't like to explode things. However, this is a bit different, right? Um, I'm not exploding them because they're too close together. I'm exploding because they're literally inside of each other and I literally can't, I can't texture inside of something as, as well. It's, and the ambient occlusion would darken everything inside the, uh, the large rock. So um, to mitigate this, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these two, unhide this. Let's go ahead and bring these, oh, this, was gonna be my, this is gonna be my center. I'm gonna have this in the center. And then, oh, so, so that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these, bring out my two, and then let's go ahead and bring two, grab both of them, bring two over here. Let's say, I think that's pretty far away from my one. Yeah, there it is. I, I, need, I need areas to texture if I need be. So, so that's good enough, that's far enough. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these two and go into my threes. Bring it over here, this should be far enough. Let's unhide pretty close so there we go now we know now we, so if if I didn't bring out the high poly then the low poly would be whatever distance and then the high poly would not you could just copy this uh, translate uh, to bring the high poly over exactly where the other one is and snap it because we've we photo transforms which is, that's why it's one that's why that's important right so um, let's go ahead and, and export the lows first so I already have the other two lows out there we go. Let's go ahead and export these lows. Oh, first off, let's give it a material. Don't want to forget that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. Cause I, so I grabbed, I dragged on and grabbed all of these. Now I'm going to right click and assign new material. This pops up right here. Let's go ahead and do a Lambert. All right, there's a, there's a lot of these right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete my history and see that reduces a lot of this junk. And that's why file sizes are large if you don't delete history. And uh, if you don't have your delete history on your, your bar right here, you can go over here to edit, <clears throat> delete all by type and history, right? Cool. So uh, now that I have made my new uh, material, I'm gonna go ahead and go to material attributes. Um, and then right now it's called Lambert 2. Let's call it not Lambert 2, right? Let's call it under M underscore M for material, right? M underscore, then we're gonna call it Mallet Boy, because that's the character affected, that's the character that's gonna be using it. And then um, Rock Pillar. Cool, all right, that's done. So I'm still gonna keep these separate. I could merge these, but I don't wanna. So I'm not gonna. Oh, also, I probably should name my scene. So if you if you haven't already, go ahead and set project. I already had, but here I'm gonna show you anyway. 
Um, I'm gonna, I have this my VFX. I'm gonna go ahead and set my directory here. You can tell I set it already because I have my workspace here. Set. All right. And sometimes it'll say like, "Are you sure?" And you say yes, whatever, right? Um, and then I haven't named it yet either. So I'm gonna go ahead and save scene as. I'm gonna go ahead and call it what I should be named, and this would be. Um, for cleanliness sake, I'm gonna call it MB. So for my binary, right? Underscore, and this is gonna be the mallet boy underscore rock pillar. So my binary file, right? So that so it's the file type. Then it's your character effect of effect, and then it's your whatever it is, the asset. Um, to keep names clean, name convention clean. So there we go. And then save, ready to go. All right, so I wanna go ahead and export selection. Export selection, and I have this nice selection of these FBX things. And um, for right now anyway, I'm going to make a baked file. It's gonna have all my baked stuff. So it's going to be, what are we gonna call this? We call this, not SM. Alright, so this is going to be my Mallet Boy, Rock Pillar, or actually I'm going to call this Rock Pillar Low, because I don't want to have underscore, you'll see why. Rock Pillar Low, and I'm going to bring this to my bake folder. Rock Pillar Low. That, this, so Rock Pillar Low is these three, right? Let's go ahead and grab these highs, right? Export selection. Oh, and also real quick for the export on the low poly um, export thing. So you want to have the smooth mesh and then the reference asset content. That's what I usually have. I do not have triangulate and all this stuff on. It's just these these main two, right? Um, uh, smoothing groups. Yeah, this is yeah. Basically, what I do. So uh, quick theme convention. Click on this and then I make sure that you get it right. Right, it uses the exact same lettering to the uppercase, right? Do not make it low or high or whatever. Uh, what's up, Elaine? Al I think Elaine. Uh, Monzo, um, what percentage of game developing would you say is spent making art like this versus time spent programming working on the ga in-game engine? Um, it really depends on what the kind of game developer you are. Right, so I am an art lead. I also uh, do design work and everything. So um, for me, I spend a lot of my time on uh, front loading a lot of my work um, with design and with uh, the art pipeline. I do not program, right? I do not own a program. It's not in my my uh, tool belt. Um, I know some basic stuff, but basically I outsource my programming and I make design documents to show the programmers what I, what I want, right? Um, some designers that are a lot more tech savvy, they'll actually make blueprints and that kind of stuff. So they'll actually plan uh, mechanics with blueprints and it's just kind of like a really uh, kind of scrappy way to make a mechanic that kind of works but it's not really clean and then the, the engineer will usually clean that up and everything so I make art and then I I write design documents then and I do drawings or something like that to show the, the engineers what I'm looking for um, it's been working for me so so basically, that being said, I spend 100% of my time doing art and design. Um, but if you are a single developer, then um, that's uh, maybe 50-50. Um, it depends on how fast you are at engineer or at art. Um, not many people can do both. And honestly, if you're a solo developer, you probably shouldn't be doing a 3D game. Uh, unless you're outsourcing. All right. So um, I am making this this rock pillar effect thing uh, for those that are just coming in. Uh, this is I'm gonna show one more time. Uh, so basically, um, here is my scene right for my my game. I have my like placeholder pillar thing right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play F11 for full screen right. All right. So now if I go close to this pillar. Yeah, no problem, Lane. Uh, so if I hold R for this pillar attack, then bang, 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 right? So this is kind of what I'm trying to build. Is this like, this is an asset that will be in place of these explosions. 
Uh, the explosions might still be here, but I want to have an actual pillar rise up from the ground. Um, and so, I'll show that again. The time that, for some reason, the, the animation doesn't show every time, except it's one of the bugs I have currently. So, we'll try again. There we go. Yeah, see? And so, this spawns up to four, four hits. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and F1, or F11, I mean, and stop. Cool. So now we're in Substance Painter. Substance Painter is where the magic happens. I love Substance Painter is pure magic, right? So we have our high poly, our low poly. We know it's the right scale, right? All these, all these things are in place. Um, we've matched it. Um, now we can texture it. So let's get onto this texture work. So first off is a resolution. I wanted a 2K resolution because I can always de-res, but I can't up-res, right? If, if you author something at like, say 512, 512, then you can't up-res it without it being pixelated. Now you don't want to be pixelated, right? Unless you're doing Minecraft. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna author it, I'm gonna create it, author it at 2K, and, um, and then I can de-res it in engine, or I can de-res it here and re-export if I want to have like LODs. So um, level of detail in the game, I can have like my, 1k or or half resolution um anyway that being without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and pull this vfx and bake and i have my low here so i'm bringing to my lowest that's where i press the select button right here and then um for this um select template i'll do um pbr metal rough um, alpha test. Well, no, alpha test is for if I want to have something uh, kind of clear through stuff. So I'll do PBR metal roughness of the ASM, the first one. Uh, and I, again, I want to I want to author this at 2K. Compute change to space. Don't need that necessarily. So okay. So this first thing you will not see. Um, you will not see anything pop up if your UVs are not here. It literally won't even show up on on Substance Painter. So I've already made one mistake, and that mistake was not smoothing before bringing it in, in here. And you can tell by how pixelated it looks. Like that looks like very, very low resolution kind of asset, and I don't want that. So the way to fix this is a super, super easy fix. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these, and it's not a, not a huge deal, but. Um, so I have, I can right click or sorry shift right click hold and soften and soften edge and so this actually fixes a lot of it and i'm going to go ahead and turn off this uh this edge thing right here this edge exposure um so you can kind of see what's going on so i softened everything but the problem is is that when i bake you can actually see a nasty seam where i put my uvs that is mitigated though if i go ahead and do this uh, this cool little smooth groups thing and so anyone who's interested in buying this uh, i don't sell it it's on gumroad um but go ahead and press the smooth groups i'm going to unlock and process right so it's unlocked on my normals and if you don't want to know what unlock is it's right here and go to the uh, mesh display and then unlock normals right so unlock normals and then that kind of gets all the block, the boxiness. And then the all this thing does really is um, where my seam is. If I had my UVs out, where my seam is, right here, it kind of sharpens. It sharpens that seam right here. So it basically makes it hard. It hardens only that one edge. Um, so it looks a little bit different. But um, if you want to buy this thing it's on gumroad for like i think super cheap let's see let's try to find it for y'alls gumroad login let me sure it's my right login But anyway, it, it's it's super handy. I'm gonna bring this back in real quick before, while I'm figuring out the scum road thing. So I'm gonna re-export it now that I've done that to my low. Man, I'm jamming on this music right now. This is feels it's feel good music for sure. Oh, 
All right, I think I found it. Here we go. All right, so I'm you're gonna go and see what I bought on Gumroad. It's fine. Um, so there's some past characters that I, when I was trying to learn how to do character development, I was just like reverse engineering these characters, especially this this Epi one is so good by Kristoff. Um, this is a really good way to to understand how like Overwatch characters are made. Um, very very solid uh, piece and this has some nice hand painting stuff. Anyway, that being said, this is the auto group. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, auto smoothing groups for Maya by Des Porter, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and send this link, and I hope it works. Uh, it's maybe my link because I have downloaded it already and stuff like that. I'll actually send you Des Porter's thing. So it's right here, the auto smoothing groups. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in chat. Buy this, seriously. Uh, you can just donate to him like a dollar or something like that. Get it. Um, if you make art assets, get it <clears throat> for sure. Smoothing groups uh, from uh, from Maya, right? So I'm in his library here. All right. Without further ado, let's bring it over to Painter. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this. This is the new, the new painter. I, I actually bought the old painter, but I'm using the new painter now. All right, so it still has the old one. Let's go ahead and not have the old one. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this new one in. And it's like, what do I do with this? Well, I'm just gonna press okay, recompute, and look how smooth and nice that is now. Ooh, that's fantastic. Okay, cool. Nice and, nice and clean, not so choppy, not so dumb looking. All right, cool. And see, now you have from Maya, you have my um, my material M underscore Malboy underscore rock pillar uh, right up here. And so that's good to go. It has my material. So I'm going to go from this layers to texture set settings. <clears throat> Check it. Texture set settings. I need water right now. Fantastic. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm going to go to bake mesh maps. It it's being sneaky. It wants me to. It really wants me to bake at 512 by 512. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let it. Bring it over to 2K. All right. This is super super important. Before you bake, before you bake the low to high, right? Well, first off, you need to actually bring the high in. So to do that, on this. So I'm gonna just one more time, so you guys can see. I scrolled down the text. Texture set settings. Press the bake mesh maps. This pops up. Change this to 2K because it sneakily wants me to not do 2K for whatever reason. And then press this little file folder thing right here. Oh, this high definition mesh. Click on this. I'm bringing in my high, right? And that's the conglomerate of those three different rocks. Cool. Now I have it in. Ignore back face. You don't want to bake the inside of the mesh, right? So, all right, this is important. First off, on the match, do um, by mesh name, right? Uh, this is especially important if you have things that are close together and you're baking them. You want to make sure that it's by mesh name, otherwise it'll bake it all as one cage. When you do it as mesh name, it'll be like, okay, just rock one, rock two, rock three. And even if they're close together, it would try its best not to merge them and have a bunch of baking errors. <clears throat> Alright, and if you remember, on my Maya scene, in my Maya scene, I have low and high, right? And this is why it's important. I have them uppercase, right? And so this is, it literally, it is it is very finicky about this. You need to have things uppercase or lowercase uh, the same. So this is, it's starting as lowercase. So I actually we need to delete the L and do uppercase L. And the high, same thing, uppercase H. Cool, so now by mesh name, uppercase L, uppercase H. And I'm just gonna bake everything at the moment. Let's see how it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake this one, and um, it's cool because it has these separate buttons if you have multiple uh, materials going on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I can do either of these, but I'm gonna do this one. Let's see the magic. Sometimes when I'm streaming and I bake, it 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 crashes because it's too much things happening at once. I'm filming myself and filming my screen, and I'm also creating a lot of uh, graphical um, pain on my computer. Look at that magic. And the cool thing about this is, is it is on the low res. All it did was it, it baked the high res resolution onto my low res and I'm literally using decimated meshes from CE Brush. Fantastic. Love this part of the, the part of the process. All right, cool. So now that we have this um, 
fantastic little smudge of rocks and stuff. Let's make it like do things and stuff. So cool. I'm gonna bring this up. My I want my references out. And let's go for something like this. I like this kind of gravelly, darker um, stone. Maybe kind of something between like dark brown and like this blackish, uh, dark gray, ashy kind of feel. Um, go for a little bit of both of those. And um, from here, I like how it hits the hits the edges nicely. Um, this is a better example. So I'm gonna try to try to copy this as, me as best as I can. Um, and there's a couple of ways to kind of um, get this effect. It's, it's pretty fun. So let's go ahead and try to do some stuff. All right, and Sense Painter, if you're new to Sense Painter, then um, it for some reason it always does materials first. Um, I'm just click on materials and it will open up uh, all the rest of the stuff that you can do. It's, it's, I'm not sure why it does that. Um, so let's see what we got here. On my project, I have all of my bakes. This has all my bake stuff. And so if I had any weird baking errors, I could actually export this by right clicking it, export resource, throw it in Photoshop and clean up that little baking error and then bring it back in, re-import it and then, um, and then fix that. But right now I don't see any seam errors, right? Like even where I put the UV seam, you can't even see, there's like nothing going on here. It's perfect. This is a perfect bake. So here's that massive seam that I put in my, oh no, wait, hold on. I think it's this one. And you, you wouldn't even know there's a seam there at all, right? Like, so make sure you hide your seams the best you can. There's a little bit going on right here, but it's like this, this could be, could be this far away when you're casting this uh, attack. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my, Let's go ahead and make a folder called this rock one for now anyway. Um, fill. And I'm gonna have this color be. And actually, the cool thing about this is I can actually pull from these these colors, which is dope. So I'm gonna to use this, this picker and maybe grab this malphite color or I can grab a little closer. Like that, maybe it would be good. Maybe I'll kind of go for this and then I'll like darken everything a little bit. So I think I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna grab this main color and then darken it some. Um, so first off, I have my shadow information, right? So shadow information is gonna be first. So I have my, my base color. I'm gonna call this base, base color. My rock one folder base color and then let's make another fill turn all the stuff off another fill I'm gonna call this AO AO all right cool so I'm gonna grab this base color and then well I don't have to do that I can just do it here grab this and then grab my base right this is the AO which is the uh, shadow information uh, so I want to be very similar to my base but I need to be a little more saturated this is a stylized uh, thing right so this is basically doing everything from scratch. You can sometimes have like uh, like stylized materials that will be good. Like we might be able to find a smart smart mask or smart material that can help these things. And I probably will use some smart mask stuff. So um, like here's a here's a cool bone one. Here's a cool creature teeth one. If I grab this and put it on here, it isn't really fun stuff, but. Um, yeah, that being said, like it's it's not stylized, right? It's it's too too high res, too much detail. Um, but it looks dope. If you're doing some kind of Monster Hunter game, totally good, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start my AO. And so again, this is the dark. This is the the shadow information of this of this uh, thing. So let's do black mask so it kind of hides it so but before I do that I'm going to show you that because it's layers in front 
I'm gonna do a slightly more saturated, darker version. So I'm gonna bring this picker down like this. It's my AO color. Or what I can do is I can actually pick from this like that. There we go. Cool. And I'm gonna do a black mask because I don't want it to be everywhere. This is just the shadow formation. So here we go. I'm gonna go and do my what was it? Fill. Let's do a fill. And I actually, what I want to do is grab this and look up AO. So this is my ambient occlusion. Alternatively, you can actually go into your project and just drag and drop your, your ambient occlusion in there. So there's two, there's, there's two ways you can kind of do things like that. So, all right. So see, it actually did it backwards where like the, the, in areas are actually the light zones and I don't want that to happen right I want to I want the out areas to be light zones and the the cracks to be darker right, it doesn't make much sense to have it that way um, the current way so let's go ahead and fix that the way I can do that is I go over to my I go over to here my fill right and I'll right click this and let's do a S out of levels and don't get don't get scared, right? All levels is is like, okay, I want to maximize dark and minimize light, or vice versa, or I want to flip the light and dark, which we're doing here. So I'm gonna press the invert button, and see all that did was now the dark is in the crack and um, the rest is not, right? And so it's hard to see it though; it's like super super subtle. And I want I want it to be up there, so let's go ahead and play around with these sliders. If I want it super dark, I can crank it like this all the way to this this zone. Um, I can make it super harsh by like have it all in the zone, but then I like pull this down a little bit. I can make it like super harsh lines. Um, or if I want to have it be pretty gradient, then I can just keep it all the this black one all the way to the left, and then just kind of pull this mostly to the right. So that that pops pretty nicely. And, but I don't like this green, this greeny look. This, this is kind of like a messy and it looks like dirt. And, um, and also it's not stylized, right? So, so how do I fix that? Well, one way to, one way to kind of uh, change that look is to, um, to add a blur. So I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna blur is like the fourth one. So I'm gonna add a blur and see all that really does is it helps me get rid of that graininess that I, that was on there before that nice that that's it's looking a lot better so this here this is what it was and here's what it is now it's a lot, a lot more like a stylized game now not to mention as well when you have AO and I so if you remember on the base I actually turned off the um, the roughness and on the AO I actually want the roughness to be so let's pull this up so you guys can see what's going on so here's my roughness slider. And roughness is really just like a glossiness to non-glossiness scale, right? So right now, if I, so this is a good example of this. See, everything's pretty glossy. Um, and it feels like wet. If I crank it left, it's like mirror-like. It's like super, super glossy and like wet feeling. It just feels like it's um, a pool of water in that zone. So I don't want to do that. Uh, the rule of thumb is that um, inset areas or areas that are like darker or AO um, will always be um, drier or like rougher feeling um, or looking in games. You don't want to give that you don't want to give that darker area so much attention. So you actually want to crank it low on the right side so that the outer areas have more um, more attention and these darker areas are kind of faded off in the distance and like and less shiny, right? And you can choose kind of how dull you want it to be. So like rocks, they're pretty rough, right? They're very they're very rough objects. And so in general, I, I can probably grab this base and I can probably crank it all lower, right? So like, let's say I want to have this roughness be like, I'm gonna say 0.5. Say 0.5, which is exactly middle. That's a little too shiny still. So I'm gonna say, I'm 
0.65 for your base roughness. And then for the inside uh, AO, let's do 0.8. Right, and so the outside is basically a little bit more glossy than the inside, but it's really um, it's by a tad. I'm gonna actually crank this to 0 0.6. See how that looks. Looking kind of matte. Let's play around with that a little bit. All right, I like that actually. So let's. I, this is all a work in progress. All right, 155, and then yeah, again my inside AO is 0 0.8, so it's like super dull on the inside. Cool. All right, so what else can we do? We have a curvature map here. What does that look like when we uh, pop this curvature map on? So I'm gonna make another fill. I'm gonna keep it white for right now, just so I can easily see what's going on. Let's say a red, just to make sure it's e extra easy to see what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna make a black mask, because I want it to be everywhere, right? And I'm gonna make a fill. All right, so if I throw this curvature on here, what's, what's it doing exactly? Let's see, let's see what it is. So I can tell easily by if I mask, if I mask, then you can see what's happening here. So it's it's basically everywhere, but um, but it's, so it's affecting everywhere, but it's affecting the edges more. And so that's kind of a, that's kind of a problem. Um, so what I think needs to happen is, press, if I press M again, then it'll go back to material. I don't want this whole thing to be red, right? So what I can do is I can, See, I can add a levels just like I did before. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add right click and add a levels. So I actually wanna pop the edges out. Um, let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna go to mask real quick and then I wanna, I wanna make this, everything that's not the white edges, I'll make black. A lot more like that. I actually don't wanna, I don't wanna pop out these, um, this like alligator skin looking thing. Cause that's just like the low pol the high poly kind of coming out too much. So I actually wanna avoid um, having any of this stuff happen as much as possible. So let's find out a way that we can pull that off better. So if I crank this way, there we go. So I'm kind of fading off that middle by doing this. So that's looking a lot better. That's looking a lot more isolated, right? And so you're just kind of playing around these sliders and like what is making it with the effect that I want it to. Cause I really don't want these, this alligator skin looking stuff to pop. Only the true edges. So that's looking pretty good like that. There's a little bit of fade and all this, this stuff can be blurred out like we did it before. So that's looking pretty solid. Let's see what it looks like in, in, in here. That's the red, right? Obviously I don't want a red. Let's say like a yellow, like a lighter yellow. Some more to this. Let's kind of let's grab that yellow. So to grab that, I can just pull that. Look at that, that's, that's pretty fun. So it's, it's pretty harsh, right? We have, let's go ahead and do that, that blur. Let's go ahead and add that blur. So that's the uh, filter and then blur so it looks like it's lower res when i do this but it's it's also kind of good too so that's that looks pretty good so what i can do is i can tighten up these edges so it's not so heavy looking and i also can draw on it um and and make it a little bit more clean myself so i can actually like so if I add a, add a paint, I can actually just like cut into it like this. If I wanna add my own flare to it or like tighten it like this, or I can just delete this, this area right here if I want to, I just like drawing on it, right? So this is all things I can add um, detail or get rid of detail. Um, also can tighten it up more by just changing the levels again. So let's say like, if I don't wanna tighten it up at all, I can do like this. But actually, that would be good for a variant of this color. So like, if I wanna add a gradient, um, that'd be a good way to do that. So like, see if I duplicated this, this is my edge, I'm just gonna call it edge. 
And then if I duplicate this edge and call this Welcome to the stream. Color gradient. Actually, I want edge to be the true, like, outside layer. Um, so, because the edge only covers, like, all the edges, right? So, this this next area, I'm going to have be, let's say, um, a variation of this main color. So, what is the variant of the main, main color? So, here is the base color. Let's say I have a... Let's have a, let's see, like a lighter, lighter form like that. Yeah, let's have a lighter form. And then we'll, we'll play around with that level again. Like that. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So I want to have a blur for this. I want to, well, I want to up the blur for this. Nice, nice and blurred. Cause that adds that kind of gradient effect. So now it feels like it has some variation already. And that's that feels pretty good. And let's see if we just kind of like play around with this color and see what feels good. Darker, lighter. Here's like super orange. If I want to have it like pop up and just feel like hot or something like that. Right, and this is like just my variant. Kind of like that a bit. We're just like a little more saturated, but not too much more saturated. Um, I feel like I feel like, I like that. So cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that. And so from here, um, welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Uh, feel free to add, uh, jump on the Discord if you'd like to, and say hi, or um, it's on the chat. Let's see. But yeah, I'm just making some rocks at the moment. And for those that are here, that are that are new here, um, I work on the Chaos Park game, and I am trying to make an a a hitting effect basically for a hold effect. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Press the play the game, press F11, and a hold R. It's like the explosion effect, basically. And so I am trying to flesh out all the abilities for for little Malboy here. I got my spin attack going, right? Oh, I have my side to side attacks. And I'm really trying to flesh out this last attack, which is my ultimate. And so right now it's just wham. And so yeah, up to four explosions. Cool. With out of the way and more expository, I'm gonna go back to my rocks. All right. So so far, the edge works actually feeling pretty fun now. Um, I'm gonna bring this back up here. And let's see here. So I'm liking what I have. I'm gonna play around with the edge work a little bit more and see if I can tighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back into levels. I can just kind of soften it by bringing it to the right. Okay. See, I like having a little bit of pop, but too much pop is looks kind of weird. Um, so there we go. And then um, I can pop the blur more if I want to as well. But it, see, if I add it too blurry, then it, it just won't look right. So. Again, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to call this Edge 2. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to make this bigger. And bring this under Edge. I'll call this like Edge Fade, actually. Edge Fade. And then that will be my alternate variant as well. So True Edge. So yeah, edge fade, let's see. Edge fade are just blurred, right? So edge fade. See that kind of, it kind of like is bringing this white further out. 
But then, and I, I'm actually gonna change the color a little bit because I don't want it to be that. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be like this. That's close to the same of, of as the edge. So let's go ahead and do it like. Um, let's see. Slightly darker. There we go, cool. So yeah, we have some edge fade, right? Oh, that's my edge, that's my true edge. Edge fade. And I can tell what's happening here as well as I go into mask. And so what I think I need to do is yeah, I do want to fade it a bit, but I also want it to be bigger. Something like that. There we go. Cool. Welcome to the stream. Oh, thank you. Hey, what's up? <laughs> cool to have you on the stream. Yeah, I'm just making some, some rocks and stuff. And, um, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Levels. There we go. I like that. That feels pretty good. So, I, I think I'm pretty dang close to where I want it to be. But, check this out. I like to have roughness break up. This feels way too... Uh... I don't know what to call it. Um, poster child, poster book. The I don't know. It, it feels, it feels too, too clean, right? So there's two things I can do. One thing is I can add a gradient. Second thing is I can add roughness breakup. And um, so yeah, one thing I didn't do actually was on the edge. I can add roughness. I actually want to have this be a lot like more wet looking, a lot more higher interest, right? So, it's, it's, it's fading from lower interest to higher interest. The, the lighter and further out as exposed something is, you want it to be a more interest in pops, right? So you, your dark areas are less rough, or sorry, more rough, and your outer areas are less rough and shiny. So, and that's not like realistic necessarily, but it's what stylized usually does. So I'm gonna pop this. And so let's see, what was my <clears throat> my AO, my AO was 0.8, my base was 0.55, I'm going to call my, my gradient, I'm going to add roughness and I'm going to have it at 0.5 or maybe even 0.45 and then I'm going to have my Roughness for my edge fade be 0.35. I'm gonna have my actual edge be 0.3. Cool, so it's basically from less rough to more, more rough and everything. So that feels pretty fun and stylized to me. Maybe I need to have it slightly more rough on certain areas. Um, Yeah, maybe on this one I'll have it be um, 0.5. Um, cool. So, all right, yeah, this rock's basically done, and so the um, the Malboy attack for um, the slam down is uh, pretty close to finality. Let's go ahead and quickly add this roughness variation. Might as well just call this rocks. I'm using, I'm doing it on all of them. So this one is going to be very interesting. This is going to be a roughness breakup. Roughness breakup. 
And so actually it is going to be a lighter color too. It's going to be a very, very lighter. Uh, so I'm gonna just keep this color as like a, maybe like a white. And um, black mask, before I do that, I'm gonna do like something pretty, like one to the point two, right? And so all this is is to add a little bit more extra interest and like fun to the, the whole piece. So I'm gonna add black mask and then I'm gonna add a paint and all I'm just gonna just dab it a bunch, right? So um, what I'm gonna do is go onto my brush. Let's find where brushes are again. Starter. I don't want alphas. Presets, yeah, presets, brushes. And I want artistic. I think it was artistic. No, brushes, and it's like the last one. It's like, well, one of the last ones. Watercolor, I think it was. Yeah, so yeah, this watercolor spots is a really fun one. It's an easy one to use. So, uh, this is gonna, I'm gonna have my reference break up, and first I'm gonna have it at a very higher uh, res, right? So it's gonna look like really dumb at first. But I swear it's it actually it does have a true reason behind it. So let's go to that. I um, currently I'm using my Cintiq pen. This is like the only time I'm actually using my Cintiq pen for this. And I'm just I'm just gonna be dabbing the crap out of it. And you can totally do this not by hand by adding some kind of filter thing. But I like having a lot more control over my assets like this. Um, so I'm gonna do this by hand. And no one could tell me otherwise. That's what I want to do. <laughs> so. But yeah, you can add like a clouds thing, like add a fill and add a clouds. And that totally functions similarly, but it won't have it as nearly as, as an organic of a breakup as this does. So this is kind of that feel that you get. Um, from stylized games where it's like that looks a lot more complex than it it should like this it's like really fun big shapes but then like for some reason there's like this like odd complexity that you just can't put your finger on like uh imagine like a buzz lightyear suit uh for, like it's in like 8k or something right and then like for some reason that that plastic looks so legit and it has like all this little these little micro details that just feel stylized still but in fun but like this is what this is it's, it's, it's rough this breakup so it would not be this white and ridiculous looking when i'm done with it this is just so that i can see it better so you want some of them to be kind of harsh and some of them to not be kind of harsh if you have too harsh press x to reverse and just dab the opposite way so you can kind of just erase it a bit I'm adding a little bit more up up top just because it's a lighter area. That's looking pretty dang organic. almost done with this and then I can bring it into game engine and we've literally made an asset in like a couple hours pretty dang solid rock solid in fact I am vibing with this music is keeping me going at such a late hour. And I am I'm Pacific Coast, so I guess it's not as late as probably some of you guys. And some of you might even be from a different country, so welcome if you are. Welcome if you're not. All right, so I'm gonna do the alternate real quick and just kind of delete a few of them just to have a little bit more so it's not like everywhere, everywhere, right? It's gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna make this big and just like, eh, delete a little bit, delete a little bit. 
a little bit. This is supposed to be a very, very simple pro process. This is something that like is literally just a polishing point for a lot of these assets. So just like not a big deal, right? This is just icing on the cake, legit. Cool. All right, so what the heck did I do all this for? Why do I just market the crap out of this and make it look dumb? You might ask. Well, let me tell you. I'm reducing a little bit on this, this insides. Um, this was the Reptus Breakup Pass. And what I'm gonna do is not keep it like harsh white. I'm actually going to grab the base color, or I guess the edge color probably would work good too. No, I'll keep it a harsh white for right now and see what it looks like. So there's a couple of different ways I can do this. There's like a pass through uh, method. There's multiply darken stuff. So you don't want to do multiply. There's a couple different ones. Overlay, I think screen is something that some people use. Um, normal is honestly fine. Um, soft light is okay too. See soft light still keeps it in there. You can, you can kind of see that roughness break up and that feels really cool. Um, See that? See that's 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 that that's that color variant, that roughness variant that really makes things pop. See like it's oh man, that's like it's like clean, but then it's like you have this somehow this micro detail that really can't be explained. Well that's what this is. It's just a nice little little nice uh, pops of, of roughness variant. Um, and and light colored uh, thing as well. So let's do, let's try a few other ones. It's vivid light, hard light. Hard light's a little bit too harsh. So I'm making out, I'll either, I'll either stick with my soft light or you can just kind of stick with your normal. But if you do normal, you'll have to really crank down um, your intensity like this. So this, this works just fine. And see, to make these things pop out uh, a lot is just like your, um, what is it? Yeah, to make these things pop, it's, it's basically that's why you want to keep your roughness pretty high. If I even had it higher, then they'd pop more. But I don't want them to look too glossy, right? So I think that having it at a 0.2 value is pretty is pretty good. So um, yeah, that's how you do this. I, I, actually, I actually did like the soft light one though. Let's switch back over to soft light, and then I'm gonna increase it back to its its um, former glory, about 100%. Or no, let's say let's say maybe 40%. Uh, Honestly, I really like this, so I'm <laughs> for for what I'm doing here. I'm gonna keep it at a at a hundred. <laughs> See if I have on anything else, it can add some variation. So like, say if you wanted some darker variation, like some kind of other darker tones, then you can totally do that. Where like, if this is on my normals, my normal stuff, then um, see I can add. Yeah, I can add this darker tone, this black, blackish to it and everything and make it kind of more dirty looking. Um, but yeah, this is this is purely for this roughness variant uh, variation. And so I'm gonna keep this at full white and then I'm gonna have this on my soft, soft light. But yeah, anyway, so that's the, uh, the roughness variation. Um, it looks a little bit sticky right now. So let's go ahead and pop it down. What looks good? Let's say 50%, maybe 50. Cool. All right, yeah, so that's my Reptus Variation Pass. And then the last thing to do is my Gradient Pass. Um, and then that should be, this. that should be it, so. Um, this is the new Substance bit. So I'm gonna see if there's anything that shows me Gradient. I think it's just like a fill, if I'm right. So I'm gonna add a fill. Call this gradient, gradient, and then 
gonna have it be roughness. Uh, just, just color for right now. Let's see if we can figure this out first, because <laughs> it's been a minute since I've used gradient um, pass. So I think it's going to be probably a generator. Linear 3D gradient. Yes, I was right. Perfect. Whew. Straight away, I would forget that one. All right, so to easily see what's happening, go and mask. And you can see that the gradient is coming from the top to the bottom, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So let's go to crank this up. And see if I if I increase this contrast, then I just make a harsh line. So I actually do want to keep it as, as loose as possible, nice, nice and soft, All right? And then, so if I, so, so now you can kind of see what's happening. You can see where it's at. Um, and this, this one's not be affected at all. So that's not good. Um, so one thing we can do is if that that's happening, we can have uh, gradients for each individual rock, but instead I can, I can just do, um, cause it's pretty, it's it, uh, getting there. I'm just going to go ahead and just pop it like that. So that all of these have a full, like lighter to darker value. And it helps having the position map. Um, so yeah, when I bake the position map earlier on, then that basically knows where it hi is high and it is low. And it doesn't, it doesn't use UV space. It just uses like actual world space, which is cool. All right, cool. So now that we, we see that this is working, I'm gonna press M and all right. So it looks like it looks pretty dumb. So right now it's like white up top and you just lose all value. And we don't want that. A lot of stylized stuff actually loses value as it goes dark. And so what you can do is actually, I can flip this, I can invert this gradient and make it dark. I'll show you how to do that. So first off, I'm gonna actually make it into a multiply. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off real quick just so I can see it a little bit easier. Um, all right, I'm actually going to make this just dark for right now. And see, it already kind of makes it look super cool. Like it, it feels darker value and, and I, I like that a lot and so another thing is is that the lower you get on a stylized asset the less interest you want to have on it and the less color variation you want to have on it. you also want to desaturate that zone like like shoes the further you go down so you want to have this, the main area of, of interest be like the the bust area right the the stomach to the head zones and so so again i'm going to reverse this uh gradient false to true right and see, this is looking a lot better already. Um, so this dark to dark to light. But one thing I can add is a roughness pass. And so this roughness pass, I actually want this to be very rough, right? Because if it's very rough, then um, then that means it'll be less interest, less it's desaturated, it's darker, very rough. And I also want it to not affect that much because right now it's it's really killing all my uh, my roughness around my middle section and stuff so what i'm going to do go back to my gradient go to mask again on this material and i'm going to reduce this this is the last thing y'all so we're almost done um so right about here i want to say Yeah, right, right around here. We'll see how this looks. Because the, the, unfortunately, the, the higher it all, on the balance chart I have it, the tighter it gets. And I don't want it to be too... Well, the, the cool thing is I can add a, I can add a blur, so it's, it's okay. So I'm going to have it here where it affects a little bit of this, about a third of this, and then about half of this. All right, and then I'm going to press M. And so now it's kind of hard to see even. So, but it is there. You can you can kind of tell it's there. So I'm gonna shrink it up a little bit more. I guess easier to see this way. Maybe like right there. Cool. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna make this super dull right here. So I'm gonna make it like one even. Um, Multiply, okay. So let's see what else we can do real quick for this because it's it's still not really showing as much as I want it to. 
you might have to crank it up and reduce contrast. It's looking like I don't want that harsh black line. So it's like right where it starts, like maybe right here. That feels pretty good. All right, 3D start position. Okay, cool. Yep, that's where I want to be. All right, yeah. So now we have this nice, like, darkened shadow feel that actually feels like it's like like hard ambient occlusion on the bottom and it, and it lightens up as, as it goes up and it has this roughness variation and it's lighter and the only other, other thing you might want to do is add a, a light pass but honestly the way that it already hits the edges there's no real reason for me to do that other than adding like a lighter gradient so like in, in case you want to do that it's basically just right here um, so if I turn on this and see actually you want to have the roughness be, um, below the gradient because the, the roughness pops too much in front of the gradient so see how it kind of blurs off and then so now I'm going to do a top gradient it's going to be super super um, subtle right so I'm going to duplicate this and I call this gradient light I'm going to reverse mask um, and then I'm just going to have it be extremely subtle and only in the top zone like that so right now it's, it's still dark so it's not going to really show the same way but it's going to not be dark so yeah still hitting all of them just fine but it's, it's really it's really killing this um, and actually, I don't want to have this affect the roughness, so I'm going to turn off roughness for this, so it's still still to see the roughness just fine. Um, and then I'm going to reduce this. Yeah, maybe not even have it on the small one. Um, all right, cool. And then I'm just going to have this on soft light. And see, it's it's subtle, but it's there. Um, maybe even have it be like a saturated version of this color. So whatever that edge color is. So something like um, color edge, right? And then have it be a little bit lighter than that, than that edge. If you want that saturated feel, you can add the saturated as well. So like this, this was pretty cool. So, yep, and that's that's basically it for the uh, the stones, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed this this video. I've definitely been um, wanting to put out some more videos recently, and so I'm kind of happy to get this off to you. And um, so this is like the full pipeline for something like this, a simple asset like the stones, and. Um, on the next time I see you guys, I want to try to implement this and um, see how it feels in engine um, and then make all the materials so you can see the materials. And I'll show you how to make materials, how to make mass materials um, and really bring it into the, the lighting values of the scene and just, yeah, see how it feels in game. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you save. Um, so go, go to file, save as. Um, I'm going to go to my VFX folder. This is going to be not in my bake because this is not a bake thing. So I'm going to call this substance painter underscore Malifoy underscore rock pillar. Right? So remember file type, then the character that affects Malfoy in this case, and then the last one is the rock pillar, right? Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have you on the stream. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try to stream some more for sure. Um, all right, and also, real quick, I'm saving this my pure ref. This is my nice references. I want to keep my references in, in my spot. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my VFX here and call this my rock pillar. 
And then if I if I want to, I can just do the um, just for con continuity's sake, call this my PR 